I S U P K. Yeah, yeah, it's your boy Golden. Let you know what's up when we rolling up, man. Hey, man, real quick, man, handsome, check it out. You got to tune in, man. The brother Tazariak is doing some mean things. Big shout out to I S U P K, man. Mean, man, you got to get that work. You got to go to the platform and get that work. You're giving it up, you hear me? How did we do it? 
We gathered together. We stayed together, man. We had black ministers, man. Continue on, brother. Ask thy father, and he will shoot thee. Ask your father. He's going to show you the history. Go ahead. Thy elders, and they will tell thee. And thy elders, and they will, and they will tell you, man. Give me a... Um, Go ahead. So we gonna find out. We gonna find. So the first thing I want to go to, I want to go to is in the 1400s, man. How the, a devil, a devil called Christopher Columbus, who lied. I mean, in America, lied and said Christopher Columbus discovered this land. He is a liar, man. Christopher Columbus read the apocrypha. The apocrypha are the hidden books. We we gonna read it right here. It explain the apocrypha. Go ahead. Put the Bible down. Go ahead. Hey, Salaki, Captain, if I got a problem, please. Read that. The Apocrypha is the... Salaki. The Apocrypha is the original 1611 Bible, which is 14 books taken out of the Roman Catholic Church. Right, black man. So you, so you hear a lot of rumors about certain books being taken out of the Bible. That's true. And if you get, if you get the 1611 uh, uh, version of the Bible, King James Version, the Bible will complete, be complete. And here, here, here it is right here. We have the Apocrypha right here at the table for, 12 for, for a donation of $12. This is the Apocrypha, man. This is, these are the hidden books that the devils, the Catholic Church, took out of the Bible. Why would it make it so important to take this book out of the Bible? Because of the history it has in it, man. And we gonna find out what history that Christopher Columbus used to find the chosen children of God and to find that people were here in America. Read on. The Apocrypha is the original 1611 Bible, which is 14 books taken out of the Roman Catholic Church because it speaks of these Europeans putting up a false image of Christ. Right, so recorded in this book right here, in the Apocrypha, they, they were, it was recorded. It, it was recorded when the Romans came and started whitewashing the images of Christ, and started whitewashing the images of our prophets and of Christ. They took the they took the images of our black brothers and made them white like it was theirs. It's recorded in this book. That's why those devils in the Roman Catholic Church had taken out the Bible, man. But thanks be to God that we have this, these books. You can get this online. You can get it right here at the table, man. We have it. Go ahead. They would use pagan rites to destroy the most highest people and teach a new religion on earth. How the North American Indians got to the Americas. So they set about removing it to try and deceive the masses, saying that it is not spiritually inspired when it is, and it is very prophetic. Right, so the Catholic Church tried to take this book out of the Bible and say it is, it is, it's not spiritual. There's nothing, there's nothing, there's no significance in this book. When there's, there's historical facts showing when the Catholic Church had whitewashed Christ. Because according to the Bible, Christ is a black man. It's still in there. It's in Revelations 1 and 13. But this is a book, is, is a book in between the Old Testament and the New Testament. Showing recordings of when the, when the when those devils came and started whitewashing the images of, of our prophets and our king, Jesus Christ. Go ahead. Christopher Columbus validified the Apocrypha because it was the book he was reading that gave him ge geographical location as to where he could find these slaves of the Most High. So Christopher Columbus wrote, Christopher Columbus read this book. He read the, he read the Apocrypha, man. He read the Apocrypha. He stopped off. Gone. They taught us in school that Christopher Columbus found America on accident. That he thought he was heading to India, but he never knew what he was doing and where he was heading. But that was a lie. That's what America taught us. But we're going to find out the agenda of Christopher Columbus. Go ahead. He had a plan and an agenda to go and retrieve the most honest people that were dwelling in the land, which proves that the scriptures were true. He had a plan to go retrieve who? The people, the most highest people. The most highest people, according to the, but according to Christianity, the Bible, the, the God, God would say that, I mean, I'm sorry, the pastor would say that we are all God's people. But in this Bible, God got chosen people. God got 12 tribes that he chose to be his people, man. And that is you, black, Hispanic, Native American Indian. Now we go. We go read the scripture that Christopher Columbus wrote. That Christopher Columbus read to find the Native American Indians over here in America. 
Is it thir is the second address 13 and 4? Listen up, man. This is what Christopher Columbus wrote. This is, this is what Chris Christopher Columbus read to find out that American Indians brother over here in America, man. Go ahead. Second address 13 and 40. Those are the 10 tribes which were carried away prisoners out of their own land in the time of Osea. Right. So that's 12. There, there are 12 tribes of Israel, but 10 tribes, 10 tribes were going into, was going into slavery by the Assyrian. But they say, you know what? Let's move and go to another land. So we, we, we so let's move and go to another land. So we, a new land, so we can follow our God and follow our laws. Because over there in, 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 in the east side of the world, it was so wicked, man. You had a teaching of Babylon going on. You had a teaching of the Assyrians, man, which is all one teaching, which is to be sinful against God and not follow our laws. Meaning to be, just like America, to be free. But, it's to, but, to, be, but, but to be free and do what? Free to sin against God. To be the biggest freak, the biggest homosexual, the biggest drug dealer you want, man. The biggest witch you want, man. Go ahead. Those are the ten tribes which were carried away prisoners out of their own land in the time of Hosea, the king, whom Salmanasar, the king of Assyria, led away captive. And he carried them over the waters. And so came they into another land. But they took this counsel among themselves. So the ten tribes, they took this, they took this counsel among themselves. They got together and said, man, we're going we gonna to skip. We are going to escape from this captive. We are going to escape from the slavery. And we will go to another land. Go ahead. That they would leave the multitude of the heathen and go forth into a further country. A further country? Go ahead. Where never mankind dwelt. Then that they might there keep their statutes. Right. So the ten tribes of, the ten tribes of Israel came over into America to follow the laws of the Bible. So they wouldn't be have to. So they wouldn't be have to be around the heathen who would be who were nothing but sinners, man, and filthy. Go ahead. Which they never kept in their own land, and they entered into the Euphrates by the narrow passages of the river. For the Most High then shewed signs for for them, and held still the flood till they were passed over. Right. So this is showing how this is showing how the Native American Indians were over there. In a, well, over there on, on the east side of the world, but it's showing, a, it's showing a path that they took to get over there to America. Go ahead. For through that country there was a great way to go, namely of a year and a half. It took the ten tribes of Israel a year and a half to get over from the Middle East over there to America. It took them a year and a half by the ship. Go ahead. And the same region is called Asareth. And the same region is called Asareth. Look up that word Asareth. It's an old English word for America, man. It was prophesied in a, in a Bible that the ten tribes would come over here. Who are the Native American Indians that come over here to America, man, and, and inhabit this land and follow the laws of God? And it's the same scripture that that devil, Christopher Columbus, wrote to find the children of God. Now we're going to find out what Christopher Columbus did once he got over here. That devil did not, that, that devil did not, he did not discover America, man. He followed the Bible and tracked and tracked the Native American Indians over here, man. He came over here and found them and to put them into slavery. Go ahead. The indigenous people he encountered, the Lucan, the Taino, or Arawak. The Taino, the Arawak. Those are tribes of Native American Indians. So those are the tribes that Christopher Columbus, that evil bastard, encountered when he came over here to America. When he came over here to America, go ahead. Were peaceful and friendly, noting their gold ornaments. And just like and just like God's people, like Black Hispanic Native American Indian, we're peaceful, man. That devil came over here, and we were peaceful under him. We we were peaceful, and we showed him how to survive the winter, and we showed him how to hunt and how to eat. How to survive the first winter in America. Go ahead. Columbus took some of the Arawak prisoner and insisted that they guide him to the source of the gold. Right. So Columbus came over here, snatched up the Arawak, the Arawak tribe. He seen the gold in the air. And, and Columbus said, I want that gold. Where you get that gold from? So he took them captive and said and told the Indians, show me where the gold is. That's what that devil did. Christopher Columbus was not, was not a hero. He was a devil, man. He was a bastard who murdered your children, who murdered your people, man. Go ahead. From the entry in his journal of the 12th October, 1492, 
in which he wrote of them. Many of the men I have seen have scars on their bodies. And when I made signs to them to find out how this happened, they indicated that people from other nearby islands come to San Salvador to capture them. Right, so Christopher Columbus, when he came, he seen the Arawak, the Arawak tribe had scars on them. He said, he made signs saying, what happened to you? How you get, how you get them scars on your body? And the Arawak tribe was saying, it's people, it's people that been coming over here trying to take trying to take us into slavery, but we, but we fought them off. We always fought ourselves, they're not going to slavery. Go ahead. They defend themselves the best they can. I believe that people from the mainland come here to take them as slaves. They ought to make good and skilled servants. He said, Christopher Columbus, you hear that devil? He said that, he said that, they, that the Native American Indians, the Arawak tribe and the Taino tribe should make good servants. He came over here, he did not come over here all of a sudden. Christopher Columbus did not all of a sudden bump into America and discover it. He knew who, what he was coming for. He was coming to make the, uh, he was coming to make God's children slaves and servants. Like he wrote, like he noted in his diary, man. Go ahead. It's locked. For they repeat very quickly whatever we say to them. I think that they very easily be made Christian. Right. So then it is said, now, that, now that's a deep point. Christopher Columbus said, I think it's gonna be very easy to make these to make these Native American Indians Christian. Showing what? It's gonna show that the Native American Indians were not Christian, man. They were not Christian. Christianity, Christianity is a religion of white supremacy. Right. Christianity is nothing but a religion to worship the white man. That's right. That's what Christianity is. That's why the face of Christianity is a homosexual, man. Yeah, so face of Christianity is a homosexual man. That's right. Jesus Christ was never a white man. That's right. This is a damn Roman man. Right. This is Caesar Bogia. Right. A filthy, he is a filthy man. He had incest with his sister. And he was a he was a deep, he was a real homosexual man. And he represents an organization that promotes homosexuality. That's why all Christians have made black men so soft and beat us down, man. Who molests more than the Christian church and the Catholic church? Nobody, man. Damn, go ahead. And they, and they do not, st they, in the Christian church and the Catholic church, they do not stand for, they, don't, they are not our protection. When we, 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 you see the police killings going on, and we're a Christian pastor that. He is supposed to be your leader and your protection. That devil, that, that bastard hides. Because he's a whore for the white man. And then when the white man says, Go, and when the white man says uh, our black leaders to go calm down our people, then they come out for a check. Say, hey, y'all, calm down, calm down. I know the police are killing you, but all lives matter. Let's sing Kumbaya. Let's sing, let's sing. Damn that damn singing, man. Singing is ain't gonna do nothing but bring more death, man. Damn all that singing and tambourines. This is time of war. We are in war, man. We are in the race wars. Go ahead. Well, they seem to have no religion. Right. So Christopher Columbus came and said, I'm going to make the Native American Indians Christian because they seem to have no religion. And let me tell you the definition of religion. Religion means to divide and conquer, man. That's what religion means. This Bible is not a religious book. The Bible has laws. Thou shalt not kill is not a religion. Do not have sex with your brother's wife is not a religion, man. Love your neighbor and your brother as yourself. A black man, a Hispanic man, that's not a religion. Those are laws. That is structure. A good structure, man. To run a to run a, a good run to have a good running society and a good running kingdom. You cannot have a kingdom, a well functioning kingdom without without structure and laws. Religion will break down a kingdom. Religion will break down a government, man. Our nation is down. Go ahead. If it pleases our Lord, I will take six of them to your highness when I depart. Right, so you can drop that. Christopher Columbus is a devil. That was the 1400s. We gonna drop down the show. We gonna keep, we gonna keep showing the more the history of this white man always, always murdering us and coming up against us. The white man is not your damn friend. And the Bible says he is your enemy. Go ahead. Now this is, go ahead. In order that they may learn. Get that. The Atlantic slave trade was the result of the, trans the transatlantic slave trade. The transatlantic slave trade. That's another. That's another thing in history. And, 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 and another thing, slavery was prophesied in the Bible. 
Slide, you can take this, sir. We're gonna get Deuteronomy, we're gonna get Deuteronomy, we're gonna get Deuteronomy 28 and 68, man. We're gonna go to our, we're gonna go to our favorite scripture. Showing that, showing that slavery is in the Bible. And it was prophesied in the Bible. Black man, you did not have to go through slavery. But it, but we were being hard head and we did not want to listen to our to our power. We did not want to obey the laws. And Moses and and a, and, a, and a prophet prophesied that if we do not listen to if we do not follow the laws, that we are going to go into slavery. And we gonna get it. It was prophesied, man. This Bible is alive. This Bible is not a lie. All the prophet, all the prophecies are coming alive in this Bible. Slavery was in the Bible. These race wars that's happening right now is in the Bible. Terrorist attacks is in the Bible. The Twin Towers, all those things, all these attacks is, is a prophecy in the Bible, black man. That's why it's a point for you to come back. Don't listen to that demon in your head or that Christian when somebody says uh, the Bible was man-made and all that. But these prophecies, these, these, these prophecies are coming alive. They got something got to be true about it. The prophecies in the Bible are coming alive. It can't be a lie. Go ahead. Give me 28 and 1 first. Deuteronomy 28 verse 1. And it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Right, so if you follow, the God, God said black man, Hispanic man, the children of Israel, if you follow the laws, I will set you above high. The Bible didn't, the God didn't say, I'm going to make you equal to everybody. God said, if you do my commandments, I'm going to set you above high. Even the Lord, even, there's even, there's, there's not a problem in the Bible. The Lord got a favorite. The Lord got a chosen. Go ahead. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Blessed shalt thou be in the city. Uh, all right, so now give me 15. So right now, what, what, is the, what is the condition of the black people? Our condition is hell. We're going through hell in the streets. I don't have to explain that anymore. You know what's going on in the streets of black people and Hispanic people? We are in hell. So that means the promise I came the prophecy came true is though, if we do not follow the Bible, that this will happen. Give me 2868. This was a curse. And this is slavery in the Bible. Go ahead. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Right, because the Hebrews, we are the Hebrews. We are the same slaves that were in Egypt. And, and Moses said that you were going to go into slavery, uh, go into Egypt again. We didn't go into Egypt the second time. Egypt is an old, is, is old English word for slavery. So you should go in bondage again. Go ahead. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. Black man, you wasn't going to see your homeland again. Our, our homeland is, a, is Israel, man. We are the chosen children of Israel. Go ahead. And there you shall be sold unto your enemy. And in slavery, we were sold to who? Your enemy. We were sold to our friends. Your enemy. We were sold to who? Your enemy. Who was we sold to, black man? The white man. And the white man is who? Your enemy. Our damn enemy, man. The white man is your enemy. God said in slavery, you were sold to your enemy, man. Some being, some being such a damn coward, man. We, 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 we know the white man is our enemy, but we scared to say it. You scared because you want to save, I don't know what, a job? You want to save some kind of life, black man? You don't have no damn life in this, in this damn uh, forsaken country, man. This is hell that we are in. Uh, we were, the promise right here, we made a decision that we will die for, we will die for, we will, we will die for the children of Israel. We will die prophesying Christ's words, man. Go ahead. You, and there ye, ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen. You were sold to your enemies for bondmen and for bondwomen, man. Slave men and slave women. You know you were sold to slavery. And the Bible says you were, you were sold to your enemies. The white man is your enemy, man. Go ahead. And no man shall buy you. The Atlantic slave trade was the result.
result of, among other things, labor shortage. Itself, in turn, created by the desire of European colonists to, to exploit New World land and resources for capital profits. Native peoples were first utilized as slave labor by Europeans. Right, so that's showing when Christopher Columbus came over here, he first used the Native American Indians as slaves. But he drove this, he drove our Native American Indians brother so far in the dirt, and he murdered them so much, let's see what happened. Until a large number died from overwork and old world diseases. Until they died out of overwork and well diseases. 77 million Native American Indians were killed by that devil. The white man is your enemy, man. Go ahead. So since the Native American Indians, they died off. Millions of Native American Indians died off. Now you gotta pick somebody else to do the, to do the labor because that devil was not gonna do it himself. He could not withstand the heat. Go ahead. Alternative sources of labor, which such as indentured servitude, failed to provide a sufficient workplace. Many crops could not be sold for profit or even grown in Europe. Exporting crops and goods from the New World to Europe often proved to be more profitable than producing them on the European mainland. Right. So the reason, so the reason why the white man came over into America because the the crops in Europe were not grown. The, the, the ground was not growing those crops, but it was. they said it was more profitable to grow the crops over here in the so-called New World, which is America, man. The ground over here was good, so they needed more people. They could not grow their crops in Europe. They came over here to grow their crops in America, and they needed slaves, black man, and they chose you. And they chose you. They chose you for slavery, man. It was prophesied that we could go to slavery, man. And that's the main reason that we were slaves, man. And go ahead, now read, now read that part. So black man, you want to think you're an African? Nah, black man, if you are a Negro, a Jamaican, or a Haitian man, you are not African, man. You are separate, and the Africans gonna prove it right here. Cause we gonna find out how the white man got us from, got us from the, got us from the east, the west side of Africa. We dwelled in Africa. We came from, we came from, we came from Israel, and it was 70 AD destruction. When Rome came to put a to put an end to the Jewish state, so Rome came and took over Israel, and we ran from Israel into Africa. I ran away from the Romans, man. And now, since we're in Africa, we're still amongst different people. Those Africans are still not the same blood as us. And let's see what the Africans did to us during the slavery times. Go ahead. Africans played a direct role in the slave trade selling their captives or prisoners of war to European buyers. So those Africans over there, they had prisoners and captives, man. The black man, you, black man, you were the captives. You were the prisoners of those Africans, why? Because they knew that you were not, you were not, that you were not the same people as them. Read on, we gonna prove it. The prisoners and captives who were sold were usually from neighboring or enemy ethnic groups. These captive slaves were considered other. So the, Af so the Africans, the Africans called these people other people. The Africans considered these captives and slaves as other. Meaning what? They were not like us. Go ahead. Not part of the people of the ethnic group or tribe. That's right. Go ahead, man. So what you got? What you gonna find? What you gotta find out is. The Africans sold us into slavery, and the Africans that the Africans that sold us into slavery knew that we were different, and they called us other, or called us what? Not part of the people of the ethnic group, or not part of the people, man. The Africans knew that we were not the same. Can I get like get your ham? The water. We gonna show you that the Negroes and ham are different. We gonna show you the difference between the African and the Negro. And black man, you know that. That's why those Africans that come over here, they don't mess with you. You know damn well they don't mess with you, man. They have a problem, they have a problem, they think they're better than you. They think they're better than you and they treat you wrong. Because they know they are, they are not your brother. They know that they are not, that you are not their people. Go ahead. Zion Advanced Bible Dictionary, page 330. Ham, the youngest son of Noah. So Noah had three sons. Ham, Shem, and Japheth. Black man, you come from Shem. Ham is the father of these Africans. Go ahead. Born probably about 96 years before the flood. 
and one of the eight persons to live through the flood. He became the progenitor of the dark races. So Ham became the progenitor of the dark races, but who, but except who? Not the Negro. Who? Not the Negro. Go ahead. Not the Negro, but the Egyptian. But the Egyptians, black man, you ain't no damn Egyptian, man. Take that damn uncle off your neck. You know, we're not Egypt, we're not Egyptologists. That's right. The, Egypt, the, the Egyptians had you in slavery. The Egyptians had you to build those damn pyramids what are nothing but great tombstones. It ain't no significance to those pyramids. Those are big, humongous coffins. Go ahead. Not the Negroes, but the Egyptians, Ethiopians, Libyans, and Canaanites. So the Ethiopians, the Canaanites are the South Africans, the Ethiopians, the Egyptians, and the Libyans are Africans. Black man, you're not no damn African. No, no, and those Africans knew it. That's why they sold us, they showed, that's why they sold us into slavery. That's why they sold us into slavery. You're gonna read more about it. African kings held no particular loyal particular loyalty to them. Right, the African kings and they had no particular they had no particular loyalty to us. Why? Because they were not because we when they said we are not the same people. They know that their father was Ham. They know that the Negroes, that their father was Shem. They know that we were two different nations, man. Read on. No, get us so, yeah, flip over to the next page. The African, the African is not our brother, man. And we are not Egyptian. Now we can go to 17, we can go to 1787. Go ahead. Black man, the white man is your enemy. He has always been your enemy. I'm right, right now. What I'm doing is running down, running down the history. I went to the 1400s and showed when Christopher Columbus followed the Bible to find the Native American Indians. Man, who are your brothers? I went down the history, the 1500s, to the 1700s, to the 1800s. Now we gonna get to 17. We gonna get to 1787. What happened in 1787? 1787. The three fifths compromise. The three fifths. The three fifths compromise. Basically known as black man, where you were considered three fifths of a man in a constitution. Yeah. Go ahead. The three fifths compromise was a compromise reached between delegates from southern states and those from northern states during the 1787 United States Constitutional Convention. The debate was over whether, if so, how slaves would be counted when determining a state's total population for legislative representation and taxing purposes. And taxing purposes, why? Because black man, you were property, man. You were pro your property of the white man. The white man had us as nothing but property, the same value as cattle, the same value as anything that does labor for him, man. Go ahead. The issue was important as this, as this population number would then be used to determine the number of seats that the state would have in the United States House of Representatives. Right, so you can black that, man. You can, you can, you can drop down to uh, 1831. Black man, black man, you know, you black man, you know, in 1787, we were considered three three fifths of a man. That was all. It was always it was always considered that man. And black man, your state has now your position have not changed. Just because you have a job, or you get, or even if you're an NBA or NFL player, NFL player, you are still a slave. You now you're just a slave that get 40 million, 100 million dollars. Let you do, let you do something that speak against your your association. You get kicked out of the association. Them, 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 that money gonna stop. That money gonna dry up. Go ahead. 1831 to 1838. Indian tribes forcibly resettled to the west in the in trail of ten, the trail of ten. So the twenty eight. So the twelve. The, the trail of ten was a, was a trail that was taken by the Indians when they were forcibly they forcibly moved out of their homeland by the by these devils, man. Go ahead. As part of Andrew Jackson's. Indian removal policy. Andrew Jackson, man, the man who was on the twenty dollar bill, I believe. That devil, he is the one that had to. He he the one who forcibly moved the Native Indians out of that land. So they traveled this. They traveled this trail called the Trail of Tears. Go ahead. This was the eighteen. This was eighteen thirty one to eighteen thirty eight. Go ahead. The Cherokee Nation. The Cherokee Nation. Our brothers. Go ahead. The Cherokee Nation was forced to give up its lands east of the Mississippi River and to migrate to an area in present-day Oklahoma. And that's how you know the white man is a devil. How the hell you at home chilling? You at home chilling and a white man comes to 
and when and a white man comes to the Cherokee Nation and Andrew Jackson tell, t and Andrew Jackson tells the Cherokee Nation, you gotta move, you gotta go. It said they will forcibly move. The white man is a devil forever and is forever and will always be your enemy, black man. Go ahead. The Cherokee people called this journey the Trail of Tears. Right, the Trail of Tears, because it's sad. It's sad when you're at home and somebody forcibly tell you you gotta go somewhere else. So much, so much, so when we travel, it's gonna be sad, man. All the, all the murders that happen, it's sad. Go ahead. Because of its devastating effects, the migrants face hunger, disease. The trail of tears, the trail that they took was called was was called the trail of tears because of the hell they went through traveling that trail. They were hungry. They had no food. What else, brother? The migrants face hunger, disease, disease from those filthy devils who brought who brought smallpox, man. Go ahead. And exhaustion on the forced march. For over 4,000 out of the 15,000 of the Cherokee died. Out of out of the four no, out of 4,000 out of the 15,000 Cherokees had died due due to the hand of Andrew Jackson, who was a devil, man, who was on that twenty dollar bill. Drop down to 1835. So like it. Give me um 1862, man. Cause these are these, these are a lot of black people. This right, this this president right here is a lot of black people is a lot of black people's favorite president. They think that this president is, you know, is for black people. Go ahead. 1862! President Lincoln signs the Homestead Act. No, not President Abraham Lincoln. What did Abraham Lincoln do? What did he do? Go ahead. Signs the Homestead Act, allotting 160 acres of Western land, Native American land, to anyone. Right, so he had, he had 160 acres of land and took it from the Native American Indians and said anyone can buy it. But who? Go ahead. Who could pay a dollar twenty-five? It cultivated for five years. He wanted to take 100, 160 acres of land from the Native American Indians and sell it for a hundred for a for dollar twenty-five to anybody that could cultivate it for five years. Go ahead. European immigrants and land spectators, speculators, bought fifty million acres. Congress gave another hundred million acres. Of oh. Congress gave another 100 million acres of Indian land. So, Congress, Congress, so either, either Abraham Lincoln, that, who is the devil, man, just because you think he, he freed slaves, he freed the slaves, for, it, was for, it was for an agenda, black man. Black man, you're not free today. So you should know that when he freed the so-called slaves, it was no difference, man, no change, man. Go ahead. Congress gave another 100 million acres of Indian land free to the railroad. Right. So they moved the American Indians out of their land to make railroads through the land. The white man is the devil, man. He is your enemy, man. Anybody coming up here and saying the white man is not the devil, while well, I'm going through the history of this devil, you are Uncle Tom. You are Uncle Tom Negro. And you need to wake up. Maybe, maybe you need to be driving home and the police needs to harass you so you can wake up and see the, who the, and see the, and see the devil that he is. Maybe that needs to happen, man. Go ahead. Since the Homestead Act applied only to U.S. citizens, Native Americans, blacks, and non-European immigrants were excluded. Right. So when, right. So when the Congress had 100 million acres, and when Abraham Lincoln had 160 acres, they sold it to the Europeans, and they excluded blacks, Native American Indians from buying that land. They did not want you to buy it, man. And the, and the big reason is. And the big reason is the same thing from is the same thing from from Egypt. In Egypt, in the, in the Bible, the Pharaoh feared the Pharaoh feared that the, that the Hebrews were getting well, well, they were multiplying too much. Why? Because blacks and Hispanics back then we were known for having children. We would have ten children. We would have thirteen children. The least we would have was at least five children, and it's documented in here. Black people, Hispanic people, we know we were known for having big families, man. And that, and that scared the white man. Why? Because he thought he, he would think that he would get conquered. That's the same thing that happened with Pharaoh. He was scared that the black people would, would populate and take over Egypt. So what did, what did Pharaoh do? Pharaoh had all the force, the firstborn of the, of the sons of the, of the Hebrews to be killed. And that's why today the same thing is happening, the same thing is happening today. 
history repeats itself. That's why they got Planned Parenthood, the abortion clinics, man. Black man, it ain't no black man. The Bible says it is for it is a it is a blessing for a black woman to have her damn children, man. It is a sin for her to abort that child, man. She don't have no ways to take care of it. She can bring it to the school, but the but the Lord will provide her. If the Lord gets you pregnant, God made, is the one that got you pregnant. He will find a way for you for you and your child to to to, to, to survive, man. You gotta understand that every time every time you have sex, you do not get pregnant. But when you do, it is a blessing from God. And the light of God ain't gonna give you no child for no damn reason, man. You're not gonna have that child in vain. Go ahead. So we gonna get it. So now we go, we, we we getting out of we getting out of 1862. We going to 1921. Black Wall Street, when black people came out when black people came out of slavery and were successful. We were millionaires. Can you believe that black people in 1921 were millionaires? How is that possible? We were as possible through the Jim Crow law. The Jim Crow law did not allow blacks to, to eat or to buy from white stores. So we were so we were we had no choice but to buy and eat amongst each other. Segregation is healthy for every nation. That's what you gotta understand. The Chinese are segregated. That's what they got Chinatown in every major city in America, man. And they are very healthy. They are very wealthy as a society, man. Socially, economically, and spiritually, man. And, and they are very healthy. Black man, we're not gonna get the Ethiopians, man, the Ethiopians, they got their, they got their country together and they spread out to America and they got U Street. They got U Street up the street. They got all these clubs that we go to and party in. We are, we are, we are putting our money into these Ethiopians' pockets who hate us. And they're healthy. And they're socially healthy, man. Economically and spiritually, man. Damn, yeah, man, look at the Japanese, man. All, the, all these nations know how to be amongst each other, and they are economically strong, spiritually strong. Black man, we are the nation that we are, we are the nation that are destroyed. But the, the inter, integration makes you sick. Segregation makes you healthy. All you gotta do is look around. You don't believe me? Look around, Chinatown. Go to U Street. Look at the clubs. The Ethiopians. They know how to stay amongst each other and make that guap, make that bread. Black man, it's time for us to get together and make that bread. That's right. And we gonna get to it. The Lord gonna make us get. The Lord gonna make us get to it. He gonna rip us out of the hand of the white man. Right. Go ahead, Black Wall Street. Let's get it. Black Wall Street was a prime example of the typical black community in America that did businesses. Right. So back then, it was typical for black people to do business. It was typical. Go ahead. But it was in an unusual location. You see, at the time. Oklahoma was set aside to be a black and Indian state. Right, so Oklahoma was, was set aside to be a black state in an Indian state. Black men, what you don't know, when black people and Indian people were in Oklahoma, we got together and we made business together and we had agriculture and everything together. Because we are, we are brothers, man. That's why. Skip over to the next page. Go ahead. There were over 28 black townships there. One third of the people who traveled in the, in the terrifying Trail of Tears alongside the Indians between 1830 and 1842 were black people. That's right, so black people, so Black Wall Street was built with Native American Indians and it was built with black people. Go ahead. The citizens of this proposed Indian and black state chose a black governor, a treasurer from Kansas named McDade. But the Ku Klux Klan said, that if he assumed office, they would kill him within 48 hours. A lot of blacks own farmland. A lot of blacks own farmland, black man. That's another thing we need. Black man, it's time to get back and we're gonna get our farmland back. Goddamn buying only buying these things from Safeway, Walmart and all that. It's time to grow, we're gonna grow our own food. We're gonna get back to we're gonna get back to our culture. We're gonna get back, we are gonna get back to black business. Just like how it was in the 1920s. Go ahead. And many of them had gone into the oil business. The, the community was so tight and wealthy because they traded dollars hand to hand and because they were dependent upon one another. Wait, 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 wait what? You mean black people, black people got, got rich and got wealthy by doing what? They were dependent 
upon one another. No, we were dependent on the white man. They were dependent upon one another. No, black man, we got rich by depending on other nations. They were dependent upon one another. We were dependent on one another, man. Black man, that's the only way you're going to get rich, man. We have to gather together as a nation and, they, and depend on one another. And not the white man, not the Chinese, not no other nation, man. You don't, see, you don't even see the Chinese voting. The Chinese do not damn vote. And they still got Chinatowns everywhere. They know how to depend on one another. Go ahead. And they were dependent upon one another as a result of the Jim Crow law. I'm sorry too, I'm sorry too. It says that black people had oil businesses. Meaning in Oklahoma, Oklahoma had oil. You know, oil makes you rich. That's how black people got rich, man. The blacks and the Indians, we got rich from oil being in Oklahoma. And they called it, and they called it black gold. Slug. And let me tell you one thing too. A lot of people don't know, after the Civil War, Abraham Lincoln was going to give black people the state of Oklahoma. A lot of people don't know that. You better start going in these libraries and start reading black man, understanding your history. They was get, Abraham Lincoln was get, getting ready because he knew that we couldn't exist after the Civil War. So he was getting ready to do, give a land grant and say, you know what, if we gotta just separate, uh, give a colony to the black people. And guess what happened right after that? You know he got his head blown off right down there in Ford, the Ford Theater. You understand? It's a lot of history you don't know about that the schools is not teaching our kids, man. What the brother bringing out is history that they're not teaching our children in these schools. They rather have our children on the street being the hoes and, and being drug dealers. That's what they really rather our kids being some entertainment. But we got to teach our children the history of what happened in this country. Because like the brother said, history repeats itself. Keep dropping it. That's right. Get a captain in hand. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Give me um. what I want. Give me this. The best description of Black Wall Street or Little Africa, as it was also known, would be likened it to a mini Beverly Hills. It was the golden door of the black community during the early 1900s. One doctor was Dr. Barry. So one doctor in Black Wall Street was Dr. Barry. Let's hear some history about Dr. Barry. Go ahead. Who owned the bus system. So Dr. Barry, a black man in the, in the 1920s, owned a bus system. We own we own buses, man. We own airports in 1920s. Black people, black men, Native Indian men. Go ahead. His average income was five hundred dollars a day. From him owning a bus, him for him owning a bus system back in 1920s, five hundred dollars. That's, that's a lot of money. Five hundred dollars a day. Even right now, if we was getting five hundred dollars a day, we'd be uh, we'd be all right. We all right get five dollars a day. <laughs> and do everybody go, so like, do everybody remember Rosa Parks? Come on, man. So like, and what are you brother bringing on super heavy? Like, we had our own bus system. But who, do, who does the white man make us remember? Rosa Parks. Rosa Parks. Because she wanted to sit on the front of the bus. When today Negroes go on the Chinaman bus and go straight to the back. So what does, what does it make celebrating Rosa Parks when we don't even own the buses? The Chinaman never fought to sit anywhere. He sits it in the front driving it. Crashing it every week and we paying him. We need to separate from these devils, man. What this brother bringing out, you have to pay big money for to learn. You gotta go in Howard and do two years of math, two years of physics, and if you pass it, you could sit in a history class. You're getting real brotherly love here, man. Pay attention. The history of America is bloody, deceitful, and above all, the white man is the devil, man. Go ahead. That's right, That's right man. Get a cap in the hand. So let's get more history, man. Get, get Dr. Barry. Dr. Barry, who owned the bus system, his average income was $500 a day, a hefty pocket change in 1910. During that era, physicians owned medical schools. There were also pawn shops everywhere. Brothers, jewelry stores, 21 churches, 21 restaurants, and two movie theaters. 
right, man. Black man, you had all. Oh, yeah, you had black man had black. You had black owned movie theaters, man. You had your own metal. You had your own hospitals, man. Black man, it's time we gonna get time back to that, man. Goddamn, working for this damn white man. He has treated us like trash. He has murdered us and treated us like and treated us like the dust under his under his damn feet, man. Black man, it's time to stand up and get some damn respect. And you don't gotta pick up no damn gun. What you gotta do is stop putting your money in this damn pocket. And, and obey the laws of God. That's one thing. That's how that's how that's how Black Wall Street fell because they were not following the laws of God, of our God. And I know it sounds strange because you hear God, God, God all the time. The pastor, the God that the pastor that the Christian church is talking about is a white man named is a white man named Caesar Brogy. It's not it's not the true Christ. That's the right. true Christ don't have you singing and holding hands with your enemy, man. Go ahead. Go ahead. The area encompassed over 600 businesses. Black Wall Street had over 600 businesses, man, in 1920. Go ahead. And 36 square blocks with a population of 15,000 African Americans. And when the lower economic Europeans looked over and saw that the black community, what the black community created. So the white man is seeing this. The white man is seeing this and he is saying, how the hell did these Negroes just get out of slavery and all of a sudden they got a flourishing company? They got a flour they got a flourishing state. And let's see what the white man what happened with the white man, what the white man did to Black Wall Street. Go ahead. Many of them were jealous. When the average student went to school on Black Wall Street, he wore a suit and a tie because of the morals and respect they were taught at a young age. Right, because of because of laws and the morals that we were we were we were, we were taught, man. The white man was jealous, man. Go ahead. Skip over. Who is that? Give me the 1955. Go ahead. So let's see. So let's see 1955. We dropping on 1955. Go ahead. August 1955. 14-year-old Emmett Till was kidnapped, brutally beaten, shot, and killed for allegedly whistling at a white woman. Right, so in 1955, Ed Till was killed for supposedly whistling at a, at a white woman, man. In 2016, the same thing has happened. You got Tamar Rice, you got Lana, you got Trayvon Martin. 1955 and 2016, there's no difference between black people and them being killed by white people. That should show you something. That should show you that the formula that we are, that, that the formula that black people are following to, to try to join with America, that, that is not working. That is not working, man. For the, it's like when, when it's like when, when when police kill black people, we our formula is to march in a protest, and it's not working, man. It's time to separate. separate. That that formula, that formula of, of marching and protesting is the same thing as me being a doctor. I'm trying to create a formula to uh, to treat cancer, but I keep I keep using the same the same formula for 50 years, and it's not working. It's not curing a damn thing. I need, to, I need to kill and I need to throw that formula out the damn window. I need to, make, I need to get a new formula, man. It's like, oh, go ahead. August 1955, 14-year-old Emmett Till was kidnapped, brutally beaten, shot, and killed for allegedly whistling at a white woman. Right, so right now, back in 1995, it was, right, in 1995, it wasn't showing black on black crime. We was not killing each other like that back then. But it showed that what? That the police and the white people were always killing us, man. This is, that, that's 1955. It's 2016, man. That's a big difference, man. That's over, that's like, that's over 50 years, 50 plus years. And then they've been, they been killing us even before those 50 years, man. Black man, it's time for a new formula. That new formula is called segregation. That's what that new formula is called. That new formula is, white man, you ain't getting no more of my money. The new formula is, white man, I do not want your daughter. I'm not gonna have sex with your daughter. I'm gonna have sex with a black or Hispanic woman. That's that new formula, man. Where you at? Don't worry, drop that. So now let's get down to eight right here. 19, let's get the 1980s. 1980s, go ahead. Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan, the biggest devil on the earth, man. Ronald Reagan, man. Go ahead. 
Ronald Reagan derided by the mainstream press and taking on Reagan at the height of his popularity, the freshman senator battled to reveal one of America's ugliest foreign policy secrets. Right. So Ronald Reagan had a, for, uh, he had a foreign policy secret. Let's find out what that secret, that secret, that's that. Let's find out what that secret was, man. These are th those bastards in the government. They always have passed the agenda, man, against you, man. Go ahead. In December 1985, when Brian Barger and I wrote a groundbreaking story for the Associated Press about the Nicaraguan Contra rebels smuggling cocaine into the United States. They did what? Smuggling cocaine into the United States. They did what? Smuggling cocaine into the United States. God damn that man. The white man always said the white man saying, Oh, you blacks are the ones selling drugs. You blacks are the one out of drug dealers. But, but Ronald Reagan, he knew about what? Smuggling cocaine into the United States. That devil smuggled cocaine into the into the United States, man. Right. And we're gonna read what that devil did with that cocaine. Right. Get that get right there. On January 4th, 1982, Reagan signed the top secret national security decision, Directive 17, NSDD 17, giving the CIA the authority to recruit and support the Contras with 19 million in military aid. Right, so in, 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 in Nicaragua, in, in Nicaragua, I can't even say the word, Nicaragua, in Nicaragua, right? They sent they they had rebels that go that go against the go against the, the general over there. They so called was trying to spread democracy and saying that the citizens the citizens were were, were in, a, in a drug war. The citizens were not being treated right. So America has always just like today how they said we had to go over there to the Middle East to spread democracy when they really trying to get just get the oil over there and get the resources. They they were trying to get something over here in Nicaragua, and they were supporting the rebels. The rebels who were standing against to fight against Nicaragua. Go ahead. The effort to support the Contras was one component of the Reagan Doctrine, which called for, for, for providing military support to movements opposing Soviet supported communist government. Right, give me this. During the late 1980s and the early 1990s, the CIA, the who? The CIA, the who? The CIA, the Central Intelligence Association. The who? The CIA was the biggest drug kingpin in the United States. The CIA was the biggest drug kingpin. And it wasn't no, it wasn't no Rick, no Rick, the Rick Ross. It wasn't, it wasn't all these, these, these big black drug kingpins. The big, the kingpin was who? The CIA was the biggest drug kingpin in the United States. Oh, yeah. Ronald Reagan, George H.W. Bush, and Oliver North were involved in getting arms to the Nicaraguan Contras. And they did it through the sale of cocaine to American citizens. Right, man. So they had, so, 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 through, the, so through them getting cocaine through the Nicaraguans, they had, they had Hispanic brothers coming over here, transporting the cocaine over here, and they had, and they had, and they had the brothers they had, a, they had a nigga ride with selling drugs, saying that you gotta sell drugs to raise money to, to send over there to your people that's trying to fight against that's trying to fight against the, the communists or the dictator over there in Nicaragua. And the Americans are and Americans are the blacks, man. The white man, the white man is the devil. They were they was they were setting us up. They were lock, they were locking up black men for so-called as and, and Hispanics for being drug dealers when the CIA is the biggest drug, the biggest kingpin in America, man. They are in, in damn control of the drugs coming over here. They know what's coming in, they know what's coming in through them, through them boats. They got a so-called shrimp boat, supposed to be transporting shrimp. It's cocaine in the bottom of them damn boats, man. And he knows it because he's in control of it, man. Ronald Reagan was a devil, man. And he got, he got our people, he got our aunties, our grandmothers, our mothers, our fathers, and on crack, man. The damn crack epidemic, man. Killing our people, man. The damn white man ain't going to the damn crack epidemic. We went through that damn hell, man. Death to the white man. And God is bringing it to him, man. And he deserves it, man. And he earned it for all the hell that he put us through. Give me a... The, what you're saying is so heavy, man. And what black people need to do is take a look at this, man. When Christopher Columbus came across here, 
Who did he use to fight the Indians? He used the Indians to fight against one another. Sell one guns to one side, sell guns to another side, and the Indians fought and killed one another. The same thing he did with a drug, with this drug. Went and get the Nicaraguans gun to kill one another, to fight one another, and then had us hang out on cocaine. You understand, in the 80s, dying. You understand? We call that killing two birds with one stone. You understand? The white man is a devil the Bible speaks of, man. And what this man is bring, what his brother is bringing out is heavy, man. You understand? White people has, have to pay for their crimes against blacks, Hispanics, and native Indians, man. That's right, Captain. You need a captain of hand, man. Trying to find something to follow Had loyalty, every man tried to borrow Felt pain and a lot of sorrow Got betrayed so packed, I didn't even have my heart broke Living confused, about to lose hope Cops got me on the side of the road Like a sideshow, need an antidote before I croak Now I'm setting fire to rhythm man blues Call this guitar smoke Rebel with no cause, trying to find direction The world got me vexed Picked up a bad lick of habit that's hereditary from oppression Felt like my life was on fire trying to find an exit Now look, 10 G's plus a good wreck Sometimes a follower is a soldier Trying to find a good ship. Plus when you in hell, how do you excel? Wisdom the breath of life, I don't believe in fairy tale Listen well to what I tell No call it can cause pain Something that a rebel knows very well can't you tell I was sent from the Lord? Got a tongue like a two-edged sword.